Welcome back. Time now for news from the left. We warned you that the Oscars would be lame. And it absolutely was, I'm sorry to say. And I watched the whole freaking thing. The Democrats' favorite lapdog, Jimmy Kimmel, hosted last night. He pulled only one partisan joke to his credit, but it wasn't even a good partisan. I mean, he only did one partisan joke, and it wasn't even good. In fact, it was ironically bad. See if you get it uh, before I explain on the other side. Let's play it. Editors can turn 44,000 hours of violent insurrection footage into a respectful sightseeing tour of the Capitol. He had how many months to prepare? He had one political joke, and it was that bad, and he actually inverted the truth in reality. In reality, the fake news and the January 6th committee edited the January 6th footage to fit their deadly insurrection narrative. It wasn't edited by McCarthy and Tucker putting it out there and just opening up all, all the hours of it. It was edited originally. The whole narrative behind it was edited. <laughs> and then he has the audacity to try and flip it and say it's the other way because they hate transparency, of course. Quite a show. And then there was this. Poor Don Lemon thought he'd make it through the hellstorm, thought he had made it through the hellstorm after his comments about women and their prime. And then 60-year-old Michelle Yeoh won the Oscar for Best Actress, jumps up on stage and says this to the audience. Dreams do come true. And ladies, don't let anybody tell you you are ever past your prime. <laughs> Never give up. <laughs> you, know, you know, Don was just sitting there watching the Oscars. Oh, man, I'm so glad I got through all that stuff and everything's back to normal now. And then <laughs> this actress gets up there and just blows him out of the water just one more time, just to remind everybody a month later that, oh, yeah, remember how this fell off the news cycle? Well, no, it's back in. Unfortunate. Other highlights. The most obnoxious person of the night had to be this woman, singer named Thames. Thames? I don't know. T-E-M-S, that's her name. Wearing whatever the hell that is. Uh, marshmallow cloud dress. Arrogantly ruining the night for everybody sitting around her, although I'm sure she didn't care at all. Thames was nominated for Best Original Song in Wakanda Forever, a very blah movie that was dramatically over-awarded for obvious political reasons. Thames clearly believes that the world revolves around her with that outfit, not to mention the name. I mean, first you call yourself Thames, and you expect everybody to call you Thames, and then you wear that dress to the Oscars. Uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, audacious displays of uh, arrogance I've seen in some time. Imagine sitting right behind that. The guy next to her, I don't know if it was her date or something like that, but the guy next to her sitting the whole time like this with this thing up against his head. They just sit there for five hours like that. Sounds like fun. Maybe the best moment of the night, though, came before the show on the red carpet when actor Hugh Grant uh, clearly could not stand the mindless questions from plus-sized supermodel Ashley Graham now, I don't know if you know who Ashley Graham is, but she gets to be a multi-millionaire fashion model despite making not one single physical sacrifice in her entire life and posting videos like this online. Real hot girls eat hot girl food mm -hmm. because we're just hot and we hang out with other hotties. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You say so, honey. After jumping ahead of millions of girls who live at the gym and eat nothing but salmon and salad, there's a bunch of them here in New York, the overweight equity model now gets to be a national entertainment host as well. But actor Hugh Grant was not buying any of this. Uh, he agreed, for some reason, to be interviewed uh, on the red carpet before the Oscars, where he presented an award. Uh, and the English actor, after listening to some of the dumbest questions and just simplest like stuff you'd get asked by a fourth grader, uh, the way he responded was uh, was just priceless. Let's go ahead and take a look. Are you excited to see anybody win? Do you have your hopes up for anyone? Um, not, not, no, no one in particular. Okay, well, what are you wearing tonight then? Uh, just my suit. What does it feel like to be in Glass Onion? How fun is it to shoot something like that? Well, I'm barely in it. I'm in it for about three seconds. Yeah, but yeah. still, you showed up and you had fun, right? Uh, almost. Well, thank you so much. It was nice to talk to you. Yeah. All right, back to you guys. 
the best part is at the very end when he's like, yeah. And he's like, get me out of here. Get me away from whatever this is right now. Pretty good. A lot of people calling uh, Hugh Grant rude for that, by the way. I mean, he's getting eviscerated online because everybody, for some reason, loves this uh, plus-size supermodel. I fully support Hugh Grant, and uh, everything that he did in that interview was great, I thought. Also, just a side note, the Academy completely snubbed Top Gun Maverick. Absolutely snubbed, which I thought was easily the best movie of the year. They only won an Academy Award for Best Sound. Which is ridiculous. A movie that everybody completely loved, dominated the box office. Uh, Spielberg told Tom Cruise he saved Hollywood with this film. But because Hollywood hates American pride, and they hate movies that are loved by us peons, of course, it only won Best Sound. They threw him just a nothing award. Should have been Best Picture easily. The Best Picture should be the movie that people like the most. Nobody liked any movie better than that. I'm sorry they didn't. The whatever, everywhere, everything, all together, over time, whatever the hell it is, I, I didn't see it. I heard it was good, but I didn't see it. There's no way it was better than Top Gun. All right, up next, the lockdown queen, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, as we get away from the Oscars, finally getting real about COVID. Take a listen. We, you know, had to make some decisions that, in retrospect, don't make a lot of sense, right? You could go in the hardware store, but we, we didn't want people, you know, all congregating around the gardening supplies. People said, oh, she's outlawed seeds. It was February in Michigan. No one was planting anyway. So I look back and think, you know, that what maybe was, was, a little, was a little more than we needed to do. She's so atrocious, and she's so fake. And that accent, everything about her is just, she's just, I'm just, mm, mm, mm. Middle America woman, you can really identify with me. She's a phony. She's a lockdown freak. And the lockdowns didn't start in February 2020. They started in mid to late March and ramped up a lot deeper into the spring, which is prime time to be planting seeds. She's, she tried to act like it was February. Does anybody think that the pandemic started in February? We all remember what day it was. It was like March 16th. You remember exactly what you're doing when they shut the whole country down. An article from mid-April 2020, Michigan bans many stores from selling seeds, calls them not necessary. It was April. It was not February. She knows she's lying and she's a bad liar. And then let's not forget a month later in May 2020, her obnoxious husband tried to use wifey's clout to pull the boat out for Memorial Day weekend because uh, you know, nobody else was allowed to. But of course, the mayor should be allowed to or the governor should be allowed to go out on their boat. Rules for the not for me.